Hello, we are doing unsupervised learning. We already had covered up PCA. We had already covered up uh, Gaussian mixture model GMM and we had seen the PCA demo, right? In this session, we will take a new topic, but it is based on PCA. So what I'm going to do is I'll compare two things and then I'll grab a new topic, which is the non-negative matrix factorization, but it is based on the uh, PCA. Uh, itself okay so I have to cover up a little bit information uh, from the PCA so what exactly happens in PCA as I as I told you that it is a method it is a method that uh, rotates the data set such a way that the rotated features that the uh, rotated features are statistically correlated with each other okay and this is the meaning of pca pca does pc what PCA does is it basically used to reduce the dimensions but how it reduces the dimension it rotates your data data set in such a way that the rotated features the new features that you are getting are statistically correlated with each other earlier there is no correlation between your features however when you rotate when you do your dimension reduction and you apply PCA then you will see that your features are somehow your principal components are somehow correlated with each other and that's that's we want okay so what it conclude that it says selecting selecting only a subset of new features okay how you, how you are getting this new feature with the help of projection okay subset of new features according To how important according to how important they are for explaining the data okay I hope you you can see that uh, we are taking new features okay we are taking subset of new features but how we are taking we are taking how important they are used how important they are for our, our data set okay uh, so with the help of we are taking uh, projection into consideration and with the help of projection we are taking new features but what kind of features we are taking the important features which can be helpful in getting the you know in getting the uh, good prediction or good classification just like um, inside the uh, principal component we need that it reduces the dimension in an extent that it gives you the best classification and prediction also with the help of a uh, lower dimension okay so it, it takes it, it, it took care uh, both of the things that it reduces the dimension also and it gives you good classification and good prediction okay so this is the work of PCA and uh, also from the from the graph you can see that uh, let me just change the color a little so if this is the graph then what exactly happens in the inside the pca that uh, uh, the the principal component you will get is let's say these are the two feature uh, feature one and i'll say this is x1 and this is feature two and this is x2 then if these are the if these are the data points let me just precisely draw it over here there are so many data points that means uh, they have the larger information compared to the to the above part okay so let's say the, the this is this is the, the this is the data point all these are data points um, from the data set and they are in the higher dimension uh, and what I need is I need uh, two principal component here okay so let's say this is the center 
and uh, this is my first principal component and this is the second principal component okay so let me say this is pca2 or sorry not analysis this is just pc okay and this is pc1 so what algorithm does is the algorithm proceeds to find direction of maximum variance okay and you can understand here uh, that the what is the first step in pca it will find the the direction where the maximum information is available okay and when i say maximum information that means high data points okay high dimensions so what it what it what it gonna do is it will it will it will take it will take a, a vector space from here and you can see these these are these are the higher range data here there's so much information available in this area so it takes the it takes the arrow here and this is known as your principal component one so this maximum variance is there it is going to be our component one the principal component one okay and when i say uh, <clears throat> uh, maximum variance maximum variance means uh, that is the uh, contains most information most of the information okay so pca has has, has given me two principal components pc1 and pc2 the first pc1 uh, it arrowed towards the maximum maximum variance okay wherever the maximum information or the most of the information available in that uh, the, the area it, it directed towards there okay so this is the first step of pca now uh, it also concludes that it doesn't it, it just not only the information it also means that the the the, the features here whatever the features we have here features are mostly correlated with each other okay this is also important not only they have higher information but also the features in that area are very much correlated with each other okay um, this is the first step i can say um, let me just also put it over here this is this is the first step and what is going to be the second step the second step is is very similar to the first step but uh, what it gonna do is it will then again go to the data set and it will find the uh, next maximum variance okay it will find the next possible uh, uh, the higher range of information where it is available in the data set it will find and it will direct towards it but what is the direction the direction is going to be orthogonal okay when i say orthogonal it means right angle okay so it is going to be the right angle uh, with perspective to the um, the first uh, arrow and you can precisely can see see over here that this data is the next maximum variance and it is completely right angle to the first uh, principal component Okay. This is the second step of the algorithm. It will find the other direction where data contains most information, but it will find the direction in such a way that it becomes orthogonal to the first direction. And um, you can see that right here. So I'll write it down here that the algorithm, and this is going to be my second step. The algorithm then, algorithm finds the other direction where data contains most information but it will find the direction in such a way in such a way that it becomes
orthogonal 90 degree to the first principal component or to the first direction. Are you getting this? I hope you are getting this. Okay. So, uh, the first step is to get the maximum variance and put your arrow towards there and then the second step is the find the next maximum vari variance where the most uh, possible available information available but the direction is going to be the orthogonal to the first direction that is 90 degree 90 degree angle to the uh, first principal component uh, uh, so if i talk about only 2d so when i say two dimension there is only why only the uh, two principal component uh, because uh, and, and why only we have two directions only because we are working with two dimensions here and um, you had seen the graph right we had we had feature 1 x1 and x2 and we had seen that this is the direction this is because only two possible direction we have in the two dimensions so there is only two uh, sorry there is only one possible direction i mean for the second arrow right there is only one possible direction to have an orthogonal okay so uh, if this is the arrow here then if i am working with two dimension so if this is the two dimension okay this is x1 and this is x2 and i already have the center and i'm pointing this arrow over here then i in two dimension i only have one possible way to create the orthogonal arrow and that is the that is this direction okay maybe this is this is the other way i can do that but maybe uh, there, there is no available maximum variance is not available in this direction so i cannot do that so there are only two possible way but uh, let's say this is the only orthogonal you know um, orthogonal direction and this is 90 degree and uh, this arrow is orthogonal to the first direction and that's why we have only one possible direction however you see here However, your data set is not in two dimension, it is in higher dimensions. So, however, in higher dimension, there are many such, there are many such orthogonal direction you get. okay so not only two but you can get but you can get as many as orthogonal direction when you are working with higher dimension so it depends on you that what kind of person uh, sorry a principal component you will take from those from those uh, many orthogonal you know components you will take you, you can take any i mean you can take as many as principal component you want uh, from this orthogonal directions but here in this uh, lecture i am taking two principal components for my two dimension okay and uh, so after this step the after getting these two principal component pc1 and sorry this is pc2 and pc1 uh, the next step is to transform this okay next step is to transform it and this is the work of actual pca okay so what i'm going to do is um, you have this graph here and uh, this is my feature 1 and feature 2 but now instead of x2 and x1 what I'm going to write is I will write here uh, actually this is x1 here and let me put x2 here back uh, so instead of x1 what I'm going to write is I will write first PC I mean principal component and this is going to be uh, don't confuse it with your personal computer this is first principal component and this is your second principal component okay and now I am gonna use is I'm going to use transformation and you had seen this transform transformed function in your principal component demo also so the earlier it was earlier the data it was something like this this is the this is the data okay now I'm going to rotate this or I'm going to move this uh, using this transform function and my data set now is going to be rotated in this way 
okay it is centered around zero so earlier your principal component looks like this but now as i transform this data your principal component is going to be in this way it's, it's completely 180 degree here right so i'm not going to uh, I'm, I'm not going to you know i'm not going to draw this this principal component over here but in, instead i am going to just draw these data points that it has been transformed from 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 this okay from from this to this okay now your data set is been rotated um, in this way okay so when you rotate this then your first principal component aligns at x axis so this is your x axis and your second principal component and uh, component analysis or uh, component aligns at y axis okay i'll write it down here it shows the same data by the way it shows the same um, i need to change the color here um just get back here take the color and it first of all it shows the same data there is no difference in the data at all shows the same data and uh, the second point it is it rotated so that the first principal component aligns at x axis and second principal component aligns at y axis okay this is the thing that we want um, also i want to show you the original graph so this is the original figure you can see i have original data uh, and this is the data set and these are the data points and you can see that a pca uh, give me the two principal component component two and component one and this is my feature one by the way and this is my feature two so um, this is nothing but your x2 or it, it, this is actually zooming so that's why i cannot uh, let me just change the brush here so maybe maybe this will work so this oh i'm so sorry I need to change the color and i guess this will help me but, okay i'll try my best to give you um i don't know this is my x <laughs> x1 by oh, this is my x1 okay <clears throat> okay and yeah this is the original data that i was talking about this is x2 x1 feature 1 feature 2 and the principal component so pc2 and this is pc1 so you can see the first arrow it is in the uh, it is in, in in the direction where high variance so okay this is the high variance and the second principal component it is orthogonal to the first direction okay and this is the next high variance so this is first and this is second high variance I hope you're getting it and now uh, the original data set is being transformed or rotated with the help of transform function okay it has been rotated uh, to 180 degree and you can see it, it still we have first principal component second principal component but it is like this okay so you instead of in, not instead of but you, you can just assume that this is my x1 and this is my x2 Okay, these are features but now the graph is basically on the uh, this is basically the graph of principal component analysis we have transformed the data set to 180 degree and this is the high variance you can see uh, this area is of high variance the same uh, the same area is is being is being shown over here okay uh, so the next high variance is in this location and this is the same as this i hope you're getting it so the important thing that you have to uh, understand that your the data the data is being centered around here okay the data is being centered around here at this this at this position and you can precisely see over here that it is in the centered okay which which earlier it was not okay your zero is here and here the zero is some somewhere here okay your data is not centered but now your data is being completely centered around zero so in the node section just uh, write down here that before rotation 
how can I center this? Before rotation, the mean, the mean was subtracted from data. Mean was subtracted from data so that the transformed, so that the transformed data is converted or uh, not converted but aligns to 0 actually aligns to 0 this is the thing that happens before rotation okay I, I have to uh, actually subtract the mean from my data set so that it aligns uh, it aligns to 0 and, uh, and this is what we had seen in the graph okay so it aligns to the zero by uh, by 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 doing this so this is my data set x of i and i'm going to remove my mean from it okay this is what i did and when you do that uh, your data is going to be you know very correlated with each other and it aligns to zero this is what i did so what i did if my x i is going to be my data point then i'm going to subtract the mean from it. Okay, this is what I did. So, the next point is uh, I will say next point is after this transformation what I can do is we have many as I told you that in the higher dimensions you, you can get many principal components but we have we have many such PC components we have many such PC components but for this lecture but for this lecture only but we can we can keep only few of them okay so if you are having like 10 pc like 10, 10 uh, principal component um, using 10 principal component you can use only five of them well, that is okay right so right now i have um, so right now I have two principal component. Uh, I'm just sorry. Okay, I have. I cannot use it. Oh yeah. I, if I have two principal component, then I can use only one principal component. Okay. So instead of using two principal component, I can use only one principal component. From the from this representation, you can see that I am again reducing my two dimension to only one dimension. This, this I can conclude right at least I can I can do that right so from two principal component you are using only one pr principal component 2d to 1d this is what I said and in the graph the original graph you can see this is what it looks like so I have here principal 1 and principal 2 but now I am using only one principal component we don't have any y-axis I had reduces I, I, I just taken this this transform data this complete transform data but I had I had removed the second principal component and I get only 1D. So this graph is basically in one dimension. This is in one dimension and uh, this was earlier in the two dimension. So I reduces my uh, dimensions uh, from higher dimension to lower dimension with the help of principal component analysis. Using two PCA I only had used one PCA this is what you can see from the okay and this is one principal component and we don't have any second principal component but your transform data is going to be with respect to the second component that is being dropped okay so this is the same data well, we are just reducing the dimension this is the same data by the way and now <clears throat> if you want to get back your you know original features what exactly you can do is uh, if you want the original data I mean data set what you can do you can get back that data with the help of if you can uh, again uh, if you add your mean so xi plus mu i if you do the same thing xi your data points is again going to be plus with your mean then you you can you can again rotate back rotate actually you can again back rotate and you will get again your feature 1 that is your x1 and your feature again you will get it okay and this is the same data as the original data you can see here this is the data 
and this is the data they, they, they are the same what you have to do you just have to back rotate but before back rotating uh, uh, you have to add your mean to the data point and when you rotate it uh, make sure that you rotate with the with respect to the first component okay and you will get back to your two dimension again but however you reduced earlier this is your principal component analysis and based on this principal component analysis we have to uh, we are actually <clears throat> taking a new concept that is non negative matrix factorization and it is very similar to that of pca and why i had taken this pca again is as i told you that in unsupervised learning every topic is having a base and base is like dimension reduction and how you can do dimension re reduction i have two methods to do it one is linear method and another one is no non linear method and your principal component analysis is a dimension reduction method it comes in linear methods itself right we have seen in the notes so that's why if, before going through every topic i have to take the base and the base is pc only and that's why i'm taking it so now we going to understand the non negative matrix factorization uh, so i'll take the new page over here and i will take the color and this is going to be non negative matrix factorization <coughs> matrix factorization can't believe you and the lockdown still they are roaming around here and there. okay so we have nf nm nmf um abbreviated as uh, <coughs> nmf and this is non negative matrix factorization <coughs> so in the notes it is another unsupervised learning another unsupervised learning algorithm <coughs> i hope you can you can see this this i think it is written properly another unsupervised learning algorithm which aims to extract useful information extract useful information and by means of the information i just want that it is nothing but my feature it will extract the useful feature from the complete data set so again that by by saying this that it extract useful information or useful feature by means of that it is nothing but a technique called as feature extraction just like your pca so this is a feature extraction it is based on feature extraction method so okay so this nmf is a feature extraction method again just like pca i'll write it down here just like so it works similarly works similarly as pca that is used in dr and dr is nothing but dimension reduction okay so i am having a problem with dimensionality reduction okay so this is actually very similar to that of pca that is used in dr um, one more uh, uh, thing that i want to discuss is if you remember your pc algorithm then as i told you that they have u s and v and it comes from the sigma uh, sorry it comes from the uh, this svd okay singular value decomposition and we had seen that it needs the covariance matrix sigma okay so this is your covariance matrix if you remember the algorithm then this is the uh, thing that we had discussed this complete thing can't believe it okay so uh, this is my u actually this is u s and v and this is your singular value decomposition and this is the covariance matrix this is what we discussed so this svd function will give you this three matrix and i i, I told you that u and v 
are orthogonal to each other. Now this u and v are nothing but your principal components. So this is going to be my PC1 and this is going to be my PC2. These are the or these are the orthogonal matrices or you can say the vector spaces. Okay. So these are th these are orthogonal to each other u and v. And this uh, S is basically the diagonal matrix as I, as I told you. Uh, so this this three thing gives you the decomposition and the transformed uh, the transformed data set that we talked about okay this complete thing so in the algorithm itself it is given that u and v are nothing but orthogonal principal component uh, that svd is going to give you right and we had seen then uh, we we have reduced this u to uh, from n cross n to uh, k cross 1 i think okay this is what we had seen from n dimension to k dimension we have reduced it right so your nfm is also very similar to that of pca and uh, that is used in dr uh, next thing is uh, in the notes itself uh, so in pca in pca we find we find principal component shortly abbreviated as pc principal component we find pc principal component they are and that is they are orthogonal that is they are they are orthogonal that we had seen uh, in the algorithm itself u and v they are they are uh, orthogonal uh, and where the variance is high this is also important where the variance is high so this is for pca and now we will see that what happens in nmf so in nmf that is non negative matrix vectorization uh, where is it yeah so it says that here in nmf we want both component that is the principal component that we want both component and the coefficient of that component okay the component the coefficient to be here to be the important thing is to be non negative this is the crucial part of non negative mat matrix factorization that uh, uh, here in pca the crucial part is the orthogonal here in the NMF, the crucial part is uh, non-negative. Okay, so your component and the coefficient of that component should be non-negative. That means if I say non-negative, then it means both should be greater than or equal to zero this is what i mean okay so you are in nmf we want both the component the principal component and the coefficient to be non negative here in the pca those components should be orthogonal to each other that is the only difference we only want that it should be non negative or should be greater than or equal to zero this is the nmf and uh, we will now discuss the uh, the complete non negative matrix vectorization i just want to make make it compare with pca and and the the algorithm itself and now we will see the, the complete theory and whatever the representation we I have uh, for the NMF. Okay. Uh, so your non-negative matrix factorization uh, is a group of algorithms. So NMF. Group of algorithm. A group of algorithm that is used in uh, what you can say the for the analysis of uh, analysis of um, uh, multiple um, data set or you can say uh, multiple variant or uh, we call it multivariant okay I'm so sorry to not use that word multivariant it is a group of algorithm that that is actually used for uh, multiple variant multiple variant or multivariant uh, analysis uh, and in the linear algebra 
it represents um, in linear algebra where a matrix V is factorized this matrix V is being factorized into two matrix uh, let me take color to show this two matrix two matrix one is W and another one is H So we'll play with these two, three uh, matrices. That is V. Another one is H, and another one is W. And V is basically the output matrix. That is the that is the factor uh, matrices with the help of a product uh, matrix of W and H. Okay. So it is the algorithm that uses. We can say in the linear uh, regression for multiple variables so it uses actually in the multiple variable uh, multivariant analysis and in linear algebra we have if we have a matrix v then it is going to be factorized in in order to get two matrix matrices that is w and n and h and make sure that uh, these the property with the property these w and h with the property not only w and h but also the this double uh, this v um, let me go to here with the property um, with the property this property is important and you already know that what kind of property I, what property I am talking about with the property that all these three matrices all three all three matrices have no negative element. This is important. In PCA, we, we talk about orthogonal. However, in the NMF, we are talking about no negative values or uh, should be greater than or equals to zero. So these three matrices, we do, we do, we don't want any negative values. We only mean we, we only want positive values, okay? Uh, and this uh, and this property, this property makes the resulting matrices matrix or matrices easier to inspect okay because of that property the resultant matrix that we are getting like v or any other uh, it is going to be easier to inspect we can get uh, a profound output from those matrices okay and um, uh, this NMF, nmf nmf have the um, uh, varieties of applications in the real world or in not only in the machine learning but it, it can also be used in uh, such as so I'll write it down here. Let me just change the color. Uh, color is important, uh, and I need an eraser. So this is where is it? I think I lost my eraser here. So this. Okay, and now. So uh, the applications. I hope you can see this. Next time, I'm going to make it black. Applications of NMF, uh, it can be uh, used uh, in the field of astronomy. Uh, then it is used in computer vision. Computer vision. It is more useful in NLP, the text mining application. Um, so that's why we have document clustering okay so document clustering um, it also very useful in audio signal processing I need only positive values only no negative values so what I can get I can, I can get a smooth sine wave here where is it yeah so 
I don't want this negative values. Okay, I, I only want this. Okay, so that's why uh, this is useful in audio signal processing. Um, it also used in the machine learning, so more precisely in the recommended system. Mm. Recommended system such as in Amazon, like uh, it recommends something based on the product that you choose. So if you are selecting a cloth, then it will recommend you the other stuff based on the uh, chosen cloth. Okay. It also used in bioinformatics. These are the practical applications of NMF and uh, if you are interested, you can go for these application to work around. If you, if you know the NMF, then you can work around in these uh, fields. Okay. And uh, the NFM, NMF, uh, also NMF, in NMF, um, importantly, um, we, we, we talk about W, w and H. These are the th three matrices. Which, uh, which consist the, the complete NMF. So it actually looks like this. Mm, where exactly I can draw? I can just, uh, yeah. So it looks like this. Um, yeah, where is it? I cannot see the cursor. Yeah. So your W is this. So it is going to be the matrix. And then it is going to be product multiplied with the H matrix, which is the coefficient matrix. Okay, and then you will you will get a factor matrix in the form of V, which is a linear combination of W and H. I hope you can understand. That means the column and rows is being um, what you can say it is. Uh, get linearly co combinated with each other and it has been outputted in this V matrix. So it is linear combination, linear combination of the columns and rows of W and H. Okay, so this is the representation that I was talking about, V, uh, W and H. I hope now you can understand and we will see that what is the background that uh, we can apply in the uh, NMF okay so let me just stop so let's understand the background of NMF and uh, I was talking about V W and H matrices so let's say so let's V be the product matrix from W cross H okay and uh, you can represent that in this term V equals to W H and this V equals to W H is basically so this this basically the column vector okay the column vector of this V it, so I will write here the column vector uh, it is going to be represented as V of I. Uh, so this column vector V I is the linear combination. It should be the linear combination. I hope you can you can see that. That is the linear combination of the component. So when I say component, it is nothing but W and uh, uh, and also the coefficient. And when I say coefficient, it is the H. Okay, so it is the linear combination uh, of the column vector W uh, using the coefficient of the column H. Okay, and I can write this thing, this sentence, uh, in this way. This is hard with this pen. So I will write here that, uh, where is it? I again need to change the, yeah. I need to change the thickness. I cannot see the cursor over here, so uh, this is okay for me. So uh, what I can write is I will write V of I equals to 
I'll say W for the component and H of I. Okay, and you can see this is the column vector. Sorry, the end column vector for V, and this is the column vector H of I is the column vector of column vector of H. Okay, so if this is the oh, I'm so sorry. Uh -huh. So if uh, let me just put it put this bracket. So if your if your V looks like this, so if this is the V, then all these column are nothing but V of I. So this is V of one, V of two, V of three. So in general, this is V of I. And when I say H, so H is going to be like this. All these are H. So this is going to be H one, H two, H three, and so on too. H I. So I'm talking about these small v of i and small h of i. They are the uh, they are the uh, they are basically first v of i is the linear combination or the column vector of v and it is the linear combination from the w dot h i. Okay. Um, so I can write this here. So I'm talking about this particular equation. So I'm writing here that again. Right, where v of i is the ith column vector, it is the ith column vector of v, and this is a product matrix. We already know that it is coming from w cross h, okay. It is the ith column vector of v, and small h of i is nothing but ith column vector again column vector of matrix of matrix h okay so this is the thing that we can derive from um, uh, nmf the next important thing here that we need to see is that the linear combination that you are getting here Okay, so the 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 when you are when you are multiplying these matrices, the dimension that you are getting in the V of I or in the V matrix is basically lower than that than that of the product matrix that you are getting. Okay, um, so what I'm what I mean to say is that if your if your V is basically M cross N matrix, okay, if this is N M cross N matrix. Then I can I can say that my W is going to be like M cross cross P matrix and my H is going to be P cross N matrix. And if you see if you multiply these two things, if you multiply these two things, you're actually getting nothing but M cross N matrix, which is which is nothing but V itself, right? But the idea here is that the the factor the dimension of the factor matrices that you are getting is lower than that of the product matrices okay and this is the uh, um, you can say this is the property that forms the basis of nmf okay so i'll precisely write it down here that the dimension the dimension of the factor matrices the dimension of the factor matrices is lower than of a product matrices okay and this property this property forms the basis of NMF. Okay, so this you have to remember. And after writing this, please elaborate these, all these things in one line so that uh, you can understand that if my V is M cross N matrix, then it is the W cross H that is the product uh, uh, matrices is nothing but the original matrix M cross N. Okay, if you if you are multiplying that. But the factor, the factor that you are getting in the VI is significantly lower than that of the 
you know the dimension that you are having in the product matrices i i hope you are getting it and we can we can also visualize this whole thing this this whole thing that we had seen over here uh, with an example and i'll take an example of test text mining application for nmf, NMF. as i told you that uh, the NF, nmf is precisely used in nlp uh, nlp application so i'm also going to use uh, uh, that application to understand nmf okay so i'm going to use text mining application okay this is text mining application and let's understand now so let's say let's say my my input matrix my input matrix that is to be factored input matrix that that to be factored is nothing but a v okay so this is the factored matrix that i will get from the product matrix of w cross h this is this is my nothing but factor matrix okay so v is here 1000 rows cross 500 columns okay i'm getting this example from wikipedia and you can check that out resource too uh, if you are not very clear with this example I'm, I'm having an input matrix to be factored that is v this is capital v by the way so this v is having 1000 rows cross 500 uh, columns and uh, uh, so uh, let me bracket here and write row and this is column to be more precise and i can also say that that my row in this exam in this particular example my row represent word and my column represent document here okay so my row represent word and my column represent document that means that means we have 500 documents that means we have 500 documents as we have as these document represent column and we have column 500 so that means we have 500 documents that is indexed that is that is indexed by thousand words and because of this reason okay because of this word and document this is nothing but you will uh, you will get the application okay that is the reason we, we are getting this text mining application so we have an input matrix v having thousand rows and 500 column row represent word and column represent document here so that means and precisely we can say that we have 500 documents that is indexed by 1000 words and if i want to see it like visually the the matrix that i want to uh, that i want to see visually then let me change the color here and i'll draw that matrix so this is my input matrix v and it looks like this So these are the columns and these are the row okay so it looks like a matrix so this is this is this is starting from v1 v2 and till where till v500 okay so these these are small v so it is nothing but v of i okay that that i was talking about so we have 500 so here v the small v represent by the way the small v represent small v represent document and why document because the column here you can see the column represent document and if i am if i am indexing with small v then this small v represent here nothing but document i think you are clear with that <clears throat> so going further with this then you say that assume assume from the algorithm we want something assume from the algorithm we want something and uh, we ask something from the algorithm so assume from the algorithm we ask to find to find the or uh, let's say to find 10 feature okay 10 new feature to generate 10 feature to generate 
uh, to let, let me just put it over here to generate feature matrix feature matrix and what alphabet i use i'm going to use capital w for that i hope you remember this this w okay so so your we are asking the algorithm to find the 10 feature we are asking the algorithm to find these 10 feature so that i can generate my feature matrix w which consists of 1000 rows and 500 column beside this i want that it also finds me something called as coefficient matrix and you are right that i will represent that matrix with the help of capital h and i want that it should be oh i'm so sorry i i don't need this this 500 here uh, okay but instead of, uh, i need 10 feature right because i had used this uh, I, I 10 feature because i asked the algorithm to find 10 features and that's why uh, the 10 features are nothing but column okay this is a row and this is column and if you see our data set then the column represents the the feature value right the column represents the feature value so this is feature 1 feature 2 feature 3 and so i need i need to find these 10 feature so i i have to provide 10 here for the column right column represent feature and that's why this is feature 10 feature and in the coefficient matrix what i'm going to do is i want 10 rows and 500 columns okay this is what i want from the algorithm so uh, it it should generate uh, a w for 1000 and cross 10 and it generates h as 10 cross 500 this is i want from the algorithm uh, now if you analyze this thing here a little if you analyze here i just remove this because this is okay and if you just change the color here and if you analyze a little bit here so my v capital v as i told you it is m cross n matrix and more precisely it is 1000 cross 500 remember this you you already had you had seen this but just for the sake of this example i'm, I'm again showing you and your w is m cross t and this is 1000 cross 10 and h is p cross n and this is 10 cross 500 these are the things that we that we had seen right and let me just uh, just go back here because i had so in the next slide um, i hope you uh, you remember the previous uh, note that v equals to m cross n and w is equals to m uh, cross p and h is equals to p cross n uh, so what i'm saying here is the product of w cross h this is multiplication so product of w cross h is uh, i'll write 1000 cross 10 this is my w okay this is w and when I multiply it with 10 cross 500, this is my h. <clears throat> so what you will what you will get? You will you are basically getting 1000 cross 500. And this is is the same shape is the same shape of input. Uh, sorry is the same shape at input matrix input matrix v that is 1000 cross 500 okay so you can see uh, even I'm, I'm not getting any non-negative numbers here first of all this is the thing next is um, uh, so d w cross h the multiplication it is the linear combination okay <clears throat> so from this a uh, thousand cross 10 is multiplying with h 10 cross 500 so the v that you are getting is the linear combination of these 10 column vector are you getting this so this let me just point it out over here with the 
with the red color so this 10 this 10 that you are getting here when you will get v here it is this 10 is a linear combination it is a linear combination here inside this v uh, v uh, matrix okay so i will write it down here we can say that we can say that each column vector here each column uh, each column uh, no 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 this is each column only so each column in w cross h so when i say column that means this is my column right and this is also the column so each column in w cross h is a linear combination is a linear combination of 10 column vector and i think that you can draw something out from this okay so this is the linear combination of 10 column vector that that is you know you are getting um, in the feature extraction also you had seen that um, uh, from the independent variable you are finding 10 new independent variable and those 10 new independent variable that you are getting is the linear combination okay it is getting from the linear combination from the previous independent variable are you getting this okay so the basis of nmf we can consider we can consider each original document from the perspective of this example each original document is being built from a small set of hidden feature okay so this is small set of hidden feature is nothing but our 10 column vector okay this is 10 column vector and these are nothing but um, 10 new independent variable that you are getting okay so it is it is a hidden feature that is there in the data set itself you just have to find with the help of some uh, you know with the help of some analysis or um, um, by going through this this uh, pca or an nmf okay so this is the uh, this is the non negative matrix factorization and uh, i think and i hope that you understand it and if you have any doubt in this topic you can uh, you know uh, comment me in the comment section or maybe you can um, uh, you can mail me or do something like that i'll be happy to help you okay and thank you so much for listening to me